Let's see if we go online here. We're going to go online. Are we going online? It says I'm online. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi, this is Jacques Gaines from Jacques Gaines Photography. This is Jacques Gaines Photography. And now the station is called Jacques Gaines instead of Jacques Gaines Photography. So hello, everybody. Happy summer. I hope you've had a good summer. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and you've had a lot of fun. I got back and I got a great phone call from a great company, which I really love. And it's Fuji. And today we're going to talk about the GFX 50 X S my personal opinions and just my impressions on basically the ergonomics of the camera because I'll be testing it all weekend but I just want to talk a bit about that right away but first I just want to tell you that Jack Gaines photography is all about getting the shot but it's also about the journey getting there and I want to tell you guys that that's what it's all about here so come and join me on my journey like subscribe and make sure you hit that like button when you watch this video so today I just wanted to talk to you about what I got uh, why am I telling you about this well First of all, I want to tell you guys that I made a survey. I, maybe I can go to that survey. Uh, I made a survey on uh, uh, the GFX 50S because I talked to the people at Fuji and they said they were going to lend me the GFX 50S. I was super happy about that, but I wasn't sure what lens to get. So I actually uh, did a survey on that. And I will show you guys that survey just to tell you where we stand and I feel kind of bad because I didn't follow through with my promise. Uh, what happens is in that survey, I asked people which lens would they like me to try with the Fujifilm GFX 50S. And uh, unfortunately, what happens is that with the actual survey, let me go here into my community board. I'll put this on screen and I'll go to screen plus me. In my actual survey, I asked people to tell me what uh, which lens they wanted me to try out the most. And uh, there was the 45 2.8, which was 10%, the 23 F4 at 15%, and the 110 was at 58%. A lot of people wanted me to try that lens like really big time. Well, I didn't get those lenses. I got the 45 millimeter f 2.8. So I just want to start this whole video off by telling you guys, listen, I am sorry. I wish I could have gotten uh, the 110. I'll talk to Fuji and see what they can say about that and if I can get it later on. But today, all I wanted to do was talk to you about the actual physical camera, what it looks like, how it feels in my hand and what I think about it. Now, uh, full disclosure here, I just want to tell you guys that I did actually talk to Fuji and Fuji sent me the camera. Uh, therefore, if you feel that there's a bias or I'm a shill or whatever, go ahead, think it. I, I will let you go and do that. I'm a big fan of Fuji. I like what they do. I have the X-T2, the X-T20, and a whole bunch of great lenses by them. What I really like about Fuji is that their glass is really fantastic. They have really great glass and it's a lot of fun. But we're not here to talk about the X-T2 and the X-Glass. We're here to talk about a bit about the GFX, the whole G-Series, G the medium format camera, and the whole bit. So now, I just want to talk to you about the actual camera itself. And then after that, I'm going to talk to you about my intention and where I want to go with this camera because there's already a lot of reviews that are already done. Uh, so... Let me get right away into the slides here. I'll just tell you what I got. Okay, here's what I got. I got the Fujifilm GFX 50S, the Fujinon 32mm to 64mm f4. It's a great focal range in the medium format range. Remember, guys, that when you're in medium format, the sensor size is so large that you have to go backward when you're talking about... Now I use the word crop and I know it's not, I'm not supposed to be using the word crop, but basically it's sort of like a negative crop. I think that would be the best vocabulary to use in this case, but you have to sort of go backwards. So for example, a 50, mil, 50 millimeter, like to get the 50 millimeter equivalent on 35 millimeter, you probably have to go into 60, 70, 80 millimeter to get that right focal length. So you're sort of going backwards. You have to get lenses with larger focal lengths to get the uh, focal length that you want. Okay. Uh, now, so I have the 32 to 64 f4 and I have the 45 f2.8. And as you saw in my survey, only 10% of you people want it. <laughs> 
<laughs> see that uh, i find that funny that's the one i got but you know it's okay and i'm really happy that i got to use a camera now i also have it for three weeks so guys so you will not only see videos on reviews and what the camera is like you'll also see uh, a lot of stuff i will be talking about the camera uh in different situations that are not typical of what you think this camera can be used in and i want to make sure you guys know that because it's really 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 important i just got to pause my backup here pause for four hours i might get better stream health my stream health isn't great right now so let me just talk about the impressions i got so far and that's about it for today and i'm going to promise you a couple of things at the end so i'm going to let, let, talk about that a bit now let me go right into the camera itself. I have it in my hands right now. Here it is. Here it is. It's the Fujifilm GFX 50S. I don't, maybe I should let you guys look at it a bit. Some of these people don't let you look at the stuff. Now, as you can see from my hand, you know, it's a bigger camera. It's not a small camera. But remember, for medium format, it is relatively small, okay? So let me go into some of the things that I found pretty cool about this camera. Now, the size impresses me a lot in the fact that it is small, guys. Small for medium format. So I would say it is about the size of, oh man, okay, I'm about to say this, a 5D Mark IV, but it's a, it's a tad bigger than that, a 5D Mark IV. So I just wanted to mention that, that size is great. I mean, you're talking about a sensor. Now I will show you, I hate showing the sensor on this. There is the sensor size on it. As you can see, it is gargantuan. Look at my hand next to that. It is a huge sensor. So having that sensor size, the fact that it's a mirrorless camera makes it that they can actually bring down the size of medium format. And that's really cool about that. So. In my first impressions, what I did mention right away was that the surprise, the size impresses me. It is quite small for a medium format. I picked up a Hasselblad. I picked up a lot of the other cameras and it's surprisingly, surprisingly small. Oh, look at that. Tom, Tom's there. Hey, how's it going, Tom? I'm an owl. I got to go catch you. <laughs> That's too funny. I guess he sleeps uh, late at night. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention right off the bat while i was thinking of it is that grip is really amazing <clears throat> i i got some wine i'm gonna i got something in my throat so i'm gonna wash it down yeah i think it, it it's important to mention to you guys that the grip feel on this is really fantastic it is really 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 nice and i'm i'm not just a bit I'm telling you, I've had other cameras in my hand and I'm surprised. Ergonomically, the feel of this thing in your hand feels really fantastic. It's really cool. Uh, you also, in the back, you also have, I just wanted to show you that, that you have an actual flip to the screen. You can pull it out quite a bit. You can only pull it down 45. You cannot pull it down completely. You can pull it up a full 90, so that's kind of cool. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, uh, similar button placement to the Fujifilm. Yes, you will notice anyone out there who owns a Fujifilm X-T2, you will find that this, uh, this camera right here uh, has a lot of the buttons relatively in the same place. If you're thinking of upgrading, you have X-T2 and you like the Fujifilm glass, that is one conclusion. I'll tell you right off the bat, if you really like Fujifilm glass, you're probably going to be happy with this Fujifilm glass because you're talking about higher end glass and um, uh, you will be liking putting this in your hand. Anyone who has the X-T2 will not feel that jump too much ergonomically. I don't know about the menu yet. I swear to God, I walked into the house uh, two hours ago and I got this camera. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys so you know. It has a top screen as well right here. Uh, the menu is right there. Oh, greetings from Australia. Hey, how's it going, Gary? Yes, good to talk to you. That's cool. I, l I love live streams. It's kind of fun. And on a Friday night, it's quite cool. Us nerds who love to get into gear, you know, it's kind of cool. So that's another thing I wanted to mention. Now, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys and live, I'd love to hear from you guys. I will speak to you right off the bat. If you guys talk to me, 
we'll see what happens. But uh, if you have any suggestions, you see it on the list right now. If you have any suggestions on what I should do with this camera, I'm getting great feedback on a video I did a, a, a while back. Here are the things I am hearing from a lot of people. Low light performance, lackluster, uh, three frames per second, WTF. What the hell are they doing with three frames per second? <clears throat> Uh, focusing not on par and a lot of other things you guys i'm going to give this thing a chance <clears throat> and i really feel that right off the bat i think ergonomically it's going to be a lot of fun now before i get back into my stuff i got a guy from south africa talking to me that's so cool anyways so i wanted to show you right here here's the 45 let's give it its fair chance the 45 a 45 millimeter lens on a medium format would probably be the equivalent of about a 24 any of you guys know the actual calculation how it should be done on medium format please tell me but this is a wide angle fixed focal so i'm going to play with that as well there will be a video just on this lens and i also have the <clears throat> 32 to 64 here it is there's that big ass glass here let me try to show it to you guys so you can see it let me get your full screen here there you go that's that big ass glass you'll always notice that the rear glass on these medium formats is just gigantic it's like really huge medium format sensor is so big that you really need great glass to make sure that the resolution it is the fidelity is there that it, it really captures the resolution that the actual sensor can capture <clears throat> so as i was saying guys that's the thing. So what I'm going to do with this camera now, here's the deal. And tell me what you guys think. Um, I'm going to take this camera and put it through its paces. I'll do the image quality stuff, but I'm not a big guy. on doing the technical stuff. And I think this camera has been out a year, year and a half. And right now there's a lot of reviews out there that already give you that technical stuff you need if you need to pixel peep there's a lot of videos out there check out angry photographer's channel he's a big fuji film guy he will show you a lot of stuff so check it out over there guys it's fine what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a workflow approach to it and i'm just going to take it out and do what i feel like doing whether it's three frames per second only whether the resolution isn't there in low it doesn't matter i'm still going to go out do run and gun fashion and I'm going to do street photography with it. As big as it is, I'm still going to take it out and try to do stuff that you wouldn't expect a medium format to do. And the reason why is that with this camera, Fuji offers a price point where a lot of people can start experience, experiencing the camera uh, medium format a bit more. And they make it more accessible. And they don't just make it accessible in a cheap way. They give you great glass and they give you a great workflow. That's what I think. Now, that's how I feel now. I might have a video later on that says I don't feel that way anymore, but I just wanted to tell you that right now. So that's what I'm going to do. That is my idea. Put it through its paces in weird places where you wouldn't expect it because right away, guys, right away, ergonomically, when you pick this camera and in your hands, it really feels good. I can tell you that right off the bat. They have the old style dials, which I've always loved. I mean, they have ISO on one side here and they got your shutter speed on the other side. I love dealing with that. You know, I used to have a Canon A1. So when I pick up uh, my X-T2 and this camera, I feel completely, completely at home. Okay, so let me answer some of the questions that are there on the live stream. And after that, I'm gonna let you guys go. But here, let, let's just see. We got greetings from Australia from Gary S. How's it going? Uh, do you think it's the best camera so far? Better than the A7R3? Good question. Now, that question's a weird question because here I, I have to answer this in one way. If you check on my channel, you'll see there's a bit of an argument between me and Angry Photographer. I got Angry Photographer to come on my channel and we talked a bit about pixels and how it is. And personally, I believe that the size of a pixel trumps everything. For example, when 
you have a full frame sensor that is 24 megapixels and you have an APS-C sensor that's 24 megapixels, no matter how much technology you put in that APS-C sensor, your full frame will give you better low light tolerance and a lot of other stuff, better image quality in the end. Now, check out that video because I'm telling you, the, the, the discussion we had was really great. And Angry Photographer came out with a, a lot of great ideas and reasons why he thinks that sensor size doesn't really matter all the time. So my answer to that is I'm not sure. I'm not a big Sony fan. I own an A6000. APS-C was a great camera, but for because I do video for overheating reasons, I didn't keep it. But I heard that the A7 in the new three line are excellent. So A7, is it better than an A7R? I will find out. That's my next step. So I'm not going to tell you anything unless one, I, deal, I actually take an A7R in my hand, which probably won't happen in the near future, or if I take this camera in my hand. So, so far today, as of today, I have not actually tested the image quality on the GFX 50S. I just wanted to talk a bit about the ergonomics. Uh, better than the Nikon D850? Oh, God. There again, I suggest you guys go to Angry Photographer's channel. He has something about the D850 and how why he thinks it's just a fantastic camera and why for certain things the D850 is better than the GFX 50S. I do not know. Again, I don't have a lot of Canon equipment on me, so I can't really tell you for that. Okay, and the next thing... Oh my God, there's a lot of stuff here. Do you think the best camera far better? Hey, from South Africa. Love the size. Sa sadly, out of my price range. Yeah, I'm working with the X-T20 and the Nikon D7. Oh, your guy. This is Frank Aquino. He's working with the X-T20 and the Nikon D7... 1200 love your channel fellow canadian hey from niagara falls how's it going bro cool you know niagara falls has some of the best wine in the world it's white it's ice wine it's picked in february and january anyways you guys got to check it out ice wine niagara falls google it now but i just wanted to tell you guys that uh those two cameras that he's talking about the xt20 uh, which i have and i love it's a great camera and the d7200 listen frank you're 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 how can I say this? You're cooking with gas already. So listen, I, I'm going to try to find out where the advantage is to with getting one of these, a medium format, instead of going for something else that's an APS-C or a full frame. But Fuji's brought the price down. A lot of people yell at me and they say, listen, they, you say it's cheap, but it's not really cheap. Well, if you ever you're in the market and you want to shop for a medium format camera, you're going to see that prices are spectacular starting with the phase one which can get up to 50 60 70 thousand bucks it can get very prohibitive in price fujifilm has brought it a bit more accessible i agree it's not completely accessible but there you go um what else do we have here frank wait for rangefinder version rumors said it'll cost less than four thousand that's the new thing apparently they're going to come out with this is a rumor but apparently fujifilm is going to come out with a medium format range finder style a bit like the x pro series versus xt2 series but in medium format so we can wait and see what happens and in the meantime we got to make sure we take those shots everybody juan lopez frank the d720 okay he's talking to the guy okay gains for price okay is cheap because frank yeah i love the d yeah they're amazing okay here we go wesley smith Please include some architectural pics during your test. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, this is Wesley Smith who says maybe I should put some architectural pics uh, using these camera, uh, these lenses. I do have a wide angle lens and the other one is a wide angle zoom and it is a good idea. Now, remember, I'm, I don't have tilt shift on these and... Um, so for that, there might be some a distortion, but maybe I'll look and analyze distortion. I'll try to remember all these uh, these comments that are posted right now. It's kind of cool. Uh, now, here's the last thing. Uh, have you seen the video for Tony start stating that Fujifilm cameras are not for pro and white, uh, his wife, yes, uh, Chelsea, saying image quality on Fuji was not worth it? What do you think? Yes. 
I did see, I, I saw a couple of things and I will be looking at reviews before I go out and do reviews because I want to make sure I do a review that is different, okay? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen that. I think that Tony and Chelsea personally, they hold a lot of weight in the reviews that I do because I think they those two are great because they might talk a lot technically, but they also always include workflow. Tony and Chelsea... A lot of people don't realize, but these people have taken some great photos. They've done a lot of wildlife and they know what they're talking about. So they take into account the workflow. Now, what they said holds weight with me. I probably will look at all the reviews before I start looking at this camera. So I cannot have opinion on whether they're right on this case. But I personally, what a lot of people don't know is that I work in e -coms. I work in a situation that is a very professional situation where we have a flash situation shots have to be spot on and perfect right now we use a 5d mark 4 and 5d mark 3s uh where we work and when it the reason why is we do web so we don't do any print uh, but if we had to go to print we would probably go to medium format now most likely we would probably work with the mamiya system which means relatively the phase one or probably a Hasselblad system but that is mostly because the guy that actually manages who we work for he's basically worked with Hasselblad all his life and he's used a Hasselblad with a Mimia back so he's used that a lot so he knows how it works uh, therefore that's what we'd use but I just don't know whether it can be used professionally uh I'm a big fan of Fuji, and I also am a big fan of the idea that you have to modify your workflow. You have to slowly, every camera you get, there's a modification of workflow, whether it be Sony, Nikon, Fuji, Canon, you know, and it's all good. It's all good. You just got to work on dealing with that, whether it's good for you or not, whether I could make the statement, this is not a professional quality camera. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could do that for now. But again, maybe this will surprise me negatively. I don't know. I have no clue. So there you go. Yes, it is easy to correct perspective in Photoshop. That's Thomas mentioning it to me. Listen, I will do some architectural shots and I will do some corrections in Photoshop. Uh, obviously, as he says, the shift lens works a lot better. But, uh, you know... Tom's like me. He doesn't, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with burning in the effect you do. But anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to mention today. Again, here are the videos I have coming up using the GFX 50S. One, all the guys at the e-com where I work, they're going to come and use the camera. I got a guy who loves to do portraits. I got a guy who loves to do landscape photography. We're going to do some landscape with this thing. We're going to go out in the woods holding this thing and we're going to go take shots. That's what we're going to do. And the other thing is that we're going to do some portrait photography and we'll see how those guys feel about it. So you don't just hear my opinion. You hear guys that are passionate about, about it and, but you know, just live another reality. So that's the one thing. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to do some pixel peeping, but not a lot. And again, it's going to be workflow oriented. There you go. So you guys, I love you guys out there. I love it. We're at 16 watching for me. That's almost a record. Thanks you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the channel, like, share, subscribe. Uh, now I got another question here, Thomas and Eric. Oh, He's asking, Eric is asking, okay, but the question is, do you think Fujifilm is for pro or not? And am I talk? I'm talking, okay, Fujifilm is for pro or not. And I am talking about X-T2, X-H1, GFX. Eric, again, I really can't tell you yet. I really got to try it out. I will try it out and I'll get back to you and I'll try to address that idea because... Remember, medium format normally is something that's for professionals. Remember, I think professional print. I think right now, full frame cameras, professional web, Instagram, any sort of web you can use a full frame camera, you're fine. Whether this works well, does it work well tethered? Does it work well to give you shots that give you high image quality? I will find that out soon. I promise you, Eric, I will look into that for sure. And as again, I said before, you guys, um, 
remember that Jacques photography is all about the journey getting there and not only about taking the shot. That's what I'm here for. And make sure you keep on like, share, subscribe, everybody. And don't forget, keep on making something from nothing.